Countless champions have been crowned throughout the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But what about the underdogs, the dark horses, the decks that upon first glance make you question everything you thought you knew about the game? In this series, both MBT and myself will be showcasing some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s wackiest unsung heroes. Each episode will feature new decks, new strategies, and the results will be unpredictable. You've seen the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is the history of Jank. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. And we are back with another episode of the History of Jank. I personally am shocked that Tamias Turbo wasn't enough to net Alex a win, but he's got to start winning at some point. Maybe one of these four can help him. Ignite FTK is pretty self-explanatory. Gem Knight is a go second OTK deck that utilizes Brilliant Fusion, though it doesn't have any of the burn tools you might be familiar with yet. Prediction Princess is unironically a pretty powerful deck, uh, but again, I'd like to wait a week on it. I, I just think that I can build a better deck than what was given to us. And Resonator is of course Jack. Atlas's combo deck that makes use of the red dragons. So let's just uh, give this bad boy a little spin. No, no, no. Keep spinning. Keep spinning. That's what I thought. I said keep spinning. Ah, perfect. Ignite FTK on the first try. You know, I'm just gonna say, I like how everyone in the previous episode was blaming me for not making, like, Crimson Blader, which could have, like, actually won me a game. That's not fun, okay? I wanted to summon Tamias, and I did, and I lost anyway, because you know what? Tamias fucking sucks. That's what the history of Jank is all about, ladies and gentlemen. You're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. But you know what? I don't care, because I summoned Tamias, and I can say that I did. In any case, we are back to the wheel. Four decks, all of them terrible. Ah, some of these are better than others. Let's hope that we get one that we actually really want to play. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Always happy to take the Ignites for another run, this time trying the FTK in one of the most unreasonable decks I've ever seen in my entire life. This is Ignite FTK. I guess I should be a little more specific. This is one of many Ignite FTKs. When the Ignites were first released, they immediately set off alarm bells. Not only did they have pretty good scales, 2 and 7, they could theoretically turn into a nigh-infinite number of both material and spell activations. These proto-metal foes were played a lot, tinkered with endlessly, usually with this card, Royal Magical Library, which would draw you additional cards, which were likely to be either Ignites or cards that got to them. A number of duelists practiced a ton of decks with this strategy, and unfortunately, they were just under the power level necessary to compete. It turns out that getting infinity material every turn is exceptionally good, but doesn't compete against some of the more powerful monsters found in tribal decks like Shadal and Burning Abyss during this period. Yes, the extra deck is improving. Cards like Volcasaurus and uh, the Constellar lines are both available provided you can get enough sixes or fives on your side of the field, uh, but that's still not enough when you have to invest so much into it relative to a deck like Shadow that just gets to resolve a spell card. As a result, these cards didn't see a ton of play in the TCG. Now, they were exceptionally powerful in a number of ARG formats, which we'll be examining a little bit later, but for now, we're looking at their interaction with Royal Magical Library and what that enables. By maxing out on all of the Ignites that are legal during this period and then playing three copies of Reinforcement of the Army, which is three additional Ignites, we can, if we find Royal Magical Library, effectively draw enough cards to find monsters on our side of the field, and then a rank up Magic Argent Chaos Force, and a rank up Magic Astral Force. This allows you to, provided you have enough fours and sixes at your disposal, get into a copy of Tolmaius, into Pleiades, into Tolmi M7, or a copy of Beatrice, which you can then rank up using rank up Magic Argent Chaos Force to make the rank seven number C6 Chronomaly Chaos Atlantis. Now, don't worry about all the text on this card, it doesn't matter. You'll just be using its typing for Rank Up Magic Astral Force, which allows you to target a disease monster you control at the highest rank, and then special from your extra monster with the same type and attribute, but two ranks higher. We will be making the Light Machine Dyson Sphere, and then activating the Graveyard Effect of Argent Chaos Force to add it back to hand, and once more, fire it off, ending on Number C9 Chaos Dyson Sphere. 
At the start of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, you can attach that monster to this card as face up Xyz material. And once per turn, you can inflict 300 to your opponent for each material attached to this card. If it has a Dyson Sphere under it, which it will, you can also detach any number of Xyz materials from this card and inflict 800 damage to your opponent for each. The magic number here is seven. That will kill your opponent on the very first turn, and it's not too difficult to get to, provided you have Royal Magical Library. Now, if you're unable to find that card, then things are going to get a little nasty pretty quickly. Theoretically, pretty much every card in your deck gets you to either the Ignites or the cards necessary to set up the combo. But in actuality, there are hands that produce, I don't know, too many Argent Chaos Force, too many Astro Force, and as a result, you are just kind of sitting on your thumbs, playing a bad version of Cleefort until your opponent assembles something resembling a win condition. If we can pull off the FTK once, I'll be happy. Let's go through the individual cards. You've got three Rota, three Ignite Crusader, three Ignite Gallant, three Ignite Margrave, three Ignite Paladin, three Squire, and three Templar. This is the same card seven times. If you have an Ignite card in your other Pendulum Zone, destroy both cards in the Pendulum Zones and add a Fire Warrior type from your deck or graveyard to your hand. After that, we've got Argent Chaos Force, Astral Force, Summoner's Art to search any of your big Ignites, three copies of Royal Magical Library, three Armageddon Knight to send Zephyros the Elite and get additional activations, Summoner Monk to find Royal Magical Library and Ignition Phoenix as a mechanism by which you can get more Ignites into rotation without having to spend two on them. In the side we've got Maxi, uh, this card you may be familiar with, Vanity's Emptiness, Triple Wavering Eyes, Triple Archfiend Eccentric, and Double Rescue Hamster in the extra. We've got Castell, Beatrice, Tolmaius, Pleiades, Tolmi M7, Chaos Atlantis, Dyson Sphere, Chaos Dyson Sphere, a bunch of Utopias that can theoretically represent a ton of material underneath the Chaos Sphere at some point, Strike Bouncer, Delteros, and, well, a card to combat the Burning Abyss Shadal meta, provided things go awry. Here's Alex. Okay, I already know what you're thinking. The last time we played Fluffle, this did not particularly go well. However, we were missing some key cards for this deck that make it a lot different now. And I think I'm going to have a little bit of a better time piloting this, considering we actually have like real win conditions that aren't fucking Fright for Bear or Sheep. So this is Fluffle, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's go ahead and do the card by card. So one of the newer cards, Edge Imp Chain, says when this card declares an attack, you can add an Edge Imp Chain from deck to hand and if it's sent to the hand or field to the graveyard you can add a fright for a card from your deck to your hand you can only use one effect per turn and only once that turn you're most likely using the second effect because let's be honest the first effect who's attacking with edge of chain but in any case we need edge of sabers as well because that's one of the main pieces of our deck we of course have triple fluffle dog fluffle mouse i think is actually new during your main phase you can special summon up to two copies of fluffle mouse from your deck you can only use this effect once while face up on the field and you cannot special summon monsters from your extra deck the turn you activate this except fright for mouse or excuse me fluffle mouse so what's nice about this is that this gives you more fodder for your fusions to go into something else. So that's pretty good. We, of course, have Owl. We have Rabbit. We have Sheep. King of the Swamp for fusions. Of course, Maxi, because it's still at three. We're also playing Archfiend Eccentric because, you know, we actually have some good cards in this deck. So hopefully that's going to be enough to carry us. Then for the spells, we have Dark Fusion. Fusion summon a Fiend Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. Your opponent cannot target it with card effects this turn. You know what's a Dark Fiend? The newly released Fright for Tiger, which was one of the things we were really missing for this deck to go off. This card requires any uh, Fluffle Monster, one or more actually Fluffle Monsters, and Edge Imp Sabers. When it's Fusion Summon, you can target cards on the field. Up to the number of Fusion Materials used for its Fusion Summon, destroy them. That's why Fluffle Mouse is in here, because this actually gives us three monsters immediately to fuse with to make this, which means we can pop three cards. All Fright for Monsters you control gain 300 attack for each Fluffle Monster and Fright for Monsters you control. You can only control one Fright for a Tiger. I guess they were afraid of this deck being too good, but in any case, this is a much better way to actually, you know, counteract what your opponent is doing and get in for a ton of damage. Then we have Foolish Burial, one Fright for Factory, a continuous spell that says you can banish a polymerization spell or fusion spell from your graveyard except to Fusion Wave Motion. Love that we have that in there. Fusion summon a Fright for Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from hand or your side of the field as material. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished Fright for Fusions, add it to your hand. You can only use each effect once per turn. And speaking of which, of course, we need Fusion cards, so we have, of course, Fright for Fusion. This card allows you to summon uh, from the extra deck by banishing fusion that are either in the field or graveyard. So it's basically miracle fusion for Fright First, which is nice because we also have Polly. So Polly can work from hand and field. Fright for fusion cork from field and graveyard, which means that we're going to have a lot of fusion summoning and one Regeki rounding out the main 40. The extra, we have Bear. We have Chimera. I got to be honest, I don't really think we're going to be summoning Chimera. It's just kind of weird. Like Tiger's just so good. Chimera is like, okay, though. It has to be fusion summon. If it battles, your opponent can't activate cards or effect till the end of the damage step. And when it destroys an opponent's monster by battle and send it to grave, 
You can special summon it to your field, but its attack is halved. So it's like a bad Goyo Guardian. Like, it's fine. Whatever. We also have Leo. Leo's like okay as well. It's another Dark Fiend Fusion, I guess, for Dark Fusion at the end of the day. So we just have more targets. This requires Saw and a Fluffle Monster, which now I think about it. Saw is not even in here, so I guess we have to use King of the Swamp if we actually want to even summon this in the first place. You can target a face of monster your opponent controls, destroy it, and if you do inflict damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's original attack, not terrible. You can only use that effect once per turn. It cannot attack directly during the turn you activate that effect. We, of course, have three sheep, three tiger, two wolf, a Dante, an Angonir, an Acid Golem, and a Nightmare Shark. And for the side, just some Kaijus, Darkhold, Diffusion, MST, and Wavering Eyes. So, I can't wait to see how this one's going to go. This looks a lot more competent than what we were dealing with before, and uh, hopefully it's good enough to get us out of the gym. Tank. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. Joseph, I'm never getting out of the tank. If, I, if I'm forced to play decks like Tamias Turbo, which th those two words shouldn't even be uttered in the same sentence. Uh, yeah, th this is going to be a rough couple of, couple of months for us here. Uh, today's decks, I don't know what you're on based on your sleeves. I've got an educated guess, but uh, I don't know if you're ready for uh, the heat that I'm bringing today. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I think that this is your best shot yet at getting out of the tank. Okay. Well, I mean, I thought that several episodes ago multiple times, but uh, clearly that didn't come to pass. Hopefully, uh, we will be stuffing ourselves with uh, some frighteningly powerful cards this episode. Let's shout the patron. MBT, please hand loop Simo with GoFu Dark Synchro. This is the wrong series, Ooh, my friend. Yeah. Thank see, you for the see support. See you in Eddie. about a month, though. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, I just completely boy. forgot to. Oh, <laughs> I completely whatever. forgot to do that. All right, here we can do all it. Right, here. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, we can do it here. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I am um, okay. I, I rolled the die. I rolled a four for the. I don't even. I rolled a four. I don't even know what I'm doing it for at this point. I picked nine for no reason. Excellent. I'm glad we're both on our A game today. Oh, right, best of luck, buddy. I may have been lying to you when I said no reason. Oh, shit. What does this deck do? Uh-oh. Well, this is disastrous. Let's begin by activating Ignite Gallant. Oh, God. Here we go. And Ignite Margrave. Are we dead? Uh, I don't think so. Let's okay. just begin by doing this. Uh, we're going to grab a two scale here. How about Paladin? Sure. Uh, let's go activate Paladin, activate Squire, and that's it. a two and a seven. Let's Pendulum Summon. Oh, man, you are you are really going to shit your britches over this one. One, two. Is that <laughs> it? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Great deck. It's Great pretty deck. good, right? It's pretty good. I think there's still maybe some stuff that we can do. I mean, it's not uh, pretty. They're big. I mean, they're big. They are big. They're, they're large men. They're big old boys. I'm just trying to figure out like what I would even uh, want to do in this position. I've I've got we'll go Squire Paladin. Uh we will grab an Ignite Margrave. Okay. Uh we're going to tribute summon. <laughs> this is so bad. Yeah, I mean I'm not I'm not particularly happy about it. Um who are we overlay in for? That's a good question. We're actually pretty close. I am I am reticent to tell you. Okay. But close doesn't mean I'm dead. No, regrettably that's true. Uh all right, let's try this. We're not gonna add Margrave. We'll just do this. Alright. We're gonna grab Gallant here. Okay. We're gonna <laughs> tribute summon Gallant. Go for uh, rank six. Doesn't seem too great. Well, Beatrice is out. Oh, Beatrice is pretty good. Okay. She's all right, but she's not sticking around for long. Uh, we are going to activate Rank Up Magic Argent Chaos Force. Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, I'm with to you. To rank up into number C6, Chronomaly Chaos Atlantis. I'm 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 not with you anymore, but I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm following along. I'm all right, so along. all we care about here is the typing, Machine Light. So we can activate Rank Up Magic Argent <laughs> Astral Force. Jesus Christ. Now this allows us to we special- make it a rank nine? Yeah, a rank nine here. Uh, that's a light machine. And what do you know? Dyson oh. Sphere fits Excellent. the bill. Next, 
We will trigger the graveyard effect of Argent Chaos Force because a rank five or higher Xyz monster was special summoned while this was in the graveyard. We could go for Argent Chaos Force here to rank up into number C39 Chaos Dyson Sphere. You ever seen this, <laughs> this card? Is so f I have not. This is wild. Okay, so once per turn, I can inflict 300 damage to you for each material attached to this card, which is going to be five. So you're going to take 15 here. But... If you have number nine Dyson Sphere as a material, you can detach any and inflict 800 for each. That's correct. But ready? That's a separate Those effect? two different effects. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, so I'm going to take 1,500 to start. Yeah, so the short of it is, um, all I have to do is, I believe, uh, with seven materials, I can do 21 to you originally, followed by 56. So uh, it, it's seven or eight materials is lethal. Now, you might notice that I have five materials on this. <laughs> Uh, so... A bit short. Yeah, bit not, short. not exactly what we're looking for. We are going to detach one, two, three, four. I'm going to... I think I'm going to keep on the Dyson Sphere. Okay, we'll so do... I'm going to take... 3,200, 800 times four. Yeah. Oh, you know what? What? You know what? Fuck it. We ball. Take another eight. All right. I'll take another eight. You know, this thing has 3,600 <laughs> attack points. You can just attack me, right? Um... <laughs> All right, I'll draw. Yeah. The thing is, uh, I actually need to find a way to out this thing because if I do get clocked by this, I actually just lose the game. Uh, let's see if that is possible. Uh, that is annoying. You know, Joseph, I'm not going to lie. Uh, 3,600 attack is kind of intimidating when you're only on 2,500 life points. He's a big asshole. He's a big asshole, and he kind of looks like one, too. Oh, what am I doing? I, I'm way overthinking this. Okay, Fluffle Dog effect. Oh, shit. We will get to hand Edge Imp Sabers. Uh-oh. We will pitch King of the Swamp for polymerization. Uh-oh. We'll go Polly. I, uh, I really don't want to send this card, because this card's very funny, but I think I have to. We're going to dump Mouse... Oh, and sabers. Saw's jump scare. What is this? Mouse is kind of cool. It just gives me a bunch of free dudes for no reason. Oh, okay. And uh, we'll make Tiger. We actually have this guy now. Mm -hmm. We'll go Tiger effect, pop the sphere. Yeah. Now, the question is, is there any universe where I can game you? I'm going to go with no, but I don't want to rule it out entirely yet. Just like you, I am also dangerously close. Actually, that's not true at all. I actually can kill you because Tiger has a second effect that I forgot about. Uh, we'll go Fright for a Fusion. Oh. We'll banish the mouse and the sabers uh, for our wolf. Uh... Can can wolf attack if there's not a fusion monster used for its summon? What do you mean? Oh, materials. I thought it was wake up. So he can attack twice here? He can attack twice. So I'm taking yes. what? Fluffle isn't affected, but the other one is... Uh, yeah, so this is 17. Fluffle and uh, This Fright is 2,000 Fur. twice. And then Tiger uh, is also giving my Fright for Wolf an extra 300. I think it's actually giving you an extra 900. Oh, it's only for, oh, Fluffle and Fright for Monster. Yeah, so this is more than lethal. So I'm taking 29, 29, uh, and 25. Yeah, you got yep. it. All right, oh, this is geez. a deck now. Woohoo! Uh -oh. All hail, Tiger. Okay, well, listen, I've played against a lot of Fluffle in my day, and, uh, I will be going second. Yeah, uh, that's that's how you beat this deck, is that we don't get a battle phase. Well, you know, I will tell you this. Um, I really needed that extra card. <laughs> Would have All been right. the difference we'll between, go... uh, I think, an FTK and a no TK. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, main one in that case. Uh, now, this deck is very proficient going second. You may have, as you know... Mm -hmm. Uh, there's, there's some Fluffle, you know, community members that we know about. Yeah, this deck going first doesn't do a whole lot. Doesn't Eventually do lot. it does. Uh, now, Eventually. not so much. No, in the early stages, it's not impressive in the slightest. I think we're just gonna have to go dog. Dog's dog fine. Dog it up, baby. We'll get our sabers. Yeah. That, that's it. <laughs> that's go. our turn. Summoner's art. Okay. Uh, we're gonna get the man grave and... Man, you're going to be put in a grave next. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it's 
so bad. Is that, is that doing anything for you? Is that uh No, it's not. You're it's... Like, please shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Um hmm. For all the excitement I was prepared to uh accomplish, I think I actually just might be making a bunch of Xyz monsters. Which is pretty Shocker. lame. But uh J just like your Margrave, his sweeping attacks are feared not by just the enemy, but also his own troops. I feel yeah, like that's also true of your followers. You know, that is very true, actually. <laughs> That is truer than you know. Oh, oh, okay, I get it. I understand what's going on here. Uh, Margrave, Margrave. Sure. Wow. Uh, out of here. Let's grab a high scale. How yep. about Ignite, Margrave? Sure. All right, we're gonna scale them up. P.S. the Grigillion. One, yep. two. Wait, that's the wrong one. This is a two and a two. Three. <laughs> <laughs> there and we go. And four. Ooh, uh, Zephyros. All right, you got some. You got some plays. You got some plays. Yeah, I think I probably just have lethal. Let me let me do math here. One of my favorite parts about the Ignites was how they like rarity slotted them in the set they were released in. Like all the the six and the five, I think were like common, and then the ones that were normal summonable were like super and ultra or some <laughs> stupid shit like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've got a number of plays here. Getting the Zeph is kind of weird, actually, because it's not a warrior. No, it's it's weird because uh the way that you get over damage thresholds is by sending the Zeth, and mm. now it's already here. So, you know, it is what it is. No, we're cool, we're cool. I think I have Xaxes. Okay, so we go overlay the Zeth and whatever this guy is, Paladin for uh, Castell. Shuffle uh, back the dog. Yeah, get that guy out of here. Uh, we're gonna Zeth, uh, return Crusader. We'll take four here. Uh, then we'll activate Crusader. Uh, we're gonna pop these two. Uh, we're gonna grab ourselves. Is there a better one than Paladin? There is Templar. All right, that actually resolves all our problems. We're gonna normal Templar uh, three five. Th that's over eight. Yep. Yeah, and there you we got go. it. That's Yu-Gi-Oh. Wow, baby. riveting, riveting gameplay. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> Gotta be honest with you, Joseph. I'm I'm in a bit of a predicament here. Oh yeah. I actually I, I don't know what's correct because if I go first, then it's just a repeat of game two because this deck puts up no defense whatsoever. If I go second, however, it it gives you free reign to FTK me, and uh, I will let you know my options are basically zero to be able to uh, stop that from happening. Well, I'll tell you right now, you've got a pretty good option in terms of preventing me from FTKing, which is what if I don't draw it? You know, that's <laughs> you know, true. You You're not wrong. But if you do draw, but if I do draw it, you you do lose. You lose on the spot. That's that's the problem. It's like I have I have things going first that if I draw them, I can stop you potentially. But <laughs> that's not what my deck is trying to do. So I don't know what's correct here. This is like the so most just... intense back and forth we've had this match. I know. I, actually, that's kind of true. I think I'm just like sandbagging a bit here. All right. You know what? I'm just going to roll a die. Oh my God. All right. All right, let's see if we can hope do it. Hope you have it. <clears throat> Actually, I don't hope you have it. As a matter ah! of fact, I'd like to get out of the tank. Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Okay. Um. Wow. Oh, God. Okay. Uh. All right. Fuck it. We ball. Summoner Monk. Okay. Activate Summoner Monk. Yep. We will add Royal Magical Library to the field. Oh, no. It's over. Ah, it's so we're Paladin, so dead. Crusader, yep. pop him. Sure. Here we go. Uh, I don't know. Margrave. Scale Margrave. Yep. Royal Magical Library. Go for it. Oh, it's got to be something really particular. Oh god. Okay, here we go. Ah. No. Pass. 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 Please pass. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, son of a bitch. Okay, um... <sighs> okay, I like where this is going. I bet you do. I bet you do. Uh, we are gonna go... Oh, there's just not a good option for this yet. Yeah, what are you gonna baguska me? Ptolemyus. Oh, God. <laughs> With two material. <laughs> yeah, there's not another option. I'll go to the end phase and trigger Ptolemyus. Oh, man. Dang, that's annoying. No! Okay. I mean, you still have... Now you have the ability to do it. So, yeah, yeah. all right, we'll draw. Mm -hmm. Stand by main. Yep. Question is, what are you making? I mean, I'm assuming like infinity is still legal. Infinity is not out yet. I know. Infin infinity is also uh, way higher anyway. Yeah. So what is it? Uh, Pleiades, I think. 
I don't know. There could be like a myriad of shit. This like, uh, let's go Fluffle Owl effect. That's fine. I'll add Polly. Anything on res? <sighs> no. Foolish Burial. We will dump everyone's favorite, the Sabres. Anything here? No. Okay. Uh, we will activate the effect of Sabres. Let's go ahead and put this card on top. Yep. And we'll special. Anything here? Mm. Oh, he's looking. He's looking. Oh, wait. Go back to the Foolish Burial. I forgot this works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So after the res of the Foolish Burial? No, no, the activation. Oh, the activation. Oh, okay. Wow, we're really cheating then, aren't we? Yeah, I'm just... All right, so well. this will be in hand. Yeah. This will be top, and this will be uh, on field. All right, I'm going to try Tolmias here. Sure. Making the diamond? Uh, I am making a card to combat the Burning Abyss should all meta. Okay, that's fine. So this will get banished now, correct? Uh, I believe... Whatever I send? Burial resolves... Oh, I just can't effect. even set... It just resolves that effect, yeah, because yeah. while this material, neither party can send cards from deck to grave. Okay, so we just won't even get there, huh? Okay. Gotta be careful with my dark monster effect activations as well. Well, as much as I'm excited to negate a, uh, a Sabres, or not a Sabres, a Tiger, I'm pretty sure that you can just chain block it. Like, all of your cards trigger when they go to the graveyard. Yeah, you know, that's assuming I actually have something to chain block it with. Just saying. That's true. <laughs> Every one of them is dark. That's, that's wonderful. Well, I don't really have much of a choice. Uh, <laughs> we will go Owl Effect. Oh, actually, I cannot do that because it's a one or the other. So I will not be doing that. I have Polly, though, so it's fine. Okay. Uh, we'll send the Owl. And thankfully, I have this King of the Swamp. Oh, God. So we'll go for uh, we'll go for Tiger. I have to try it. Oh, God. It's called Sabres, right? Okay. Yep. I, I have to do this, you know? Yep. It's destroyed. That's fine. And thankfully, Fright for Fusion. Oh, is no. Fusion. So, <laughs> oh, no. Only got one. He only got one. Uh, let's go for, guess what? Another tiger. Because it's not once per turn. It's oh, crazy. It really isn't. Yeah. Uh, we'll activate, pop both your things. I bet. Uh, okay. Uh, goodbye, my friend. And uh, we go 22. Mm, yeah. Second main. I've got a back row. Go ahead. Oh, man, that would have been crazy. Uh, back to you. Oh, uh, I still have to kill you, unfortunately. Stand by main. What the fuck are you setting in this deck? Who knows? I guess I have to get a clock on you. Yeah, fuck it. Sabres. Yeah. Uh, 12-22. Yes. Uh, second main. Also, I'm cheating. Uh, I was not allowed to use this for material, but it's still two fusion materials anyway, so the result's the same. Wait, what? Um... Oh, because it's not a fluffle. It's not a fluffle. Yeah, it's a fright fur. That you, does oh my god, that 100% changes the outcome. Does it? No. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I've got I've got a bundle of good draws here. Here we go. That is not one of them. Yeah, uh, you got oh, it. Oh <laughs> my god, was this just a duplicate uh, rank up <laughs> or something? Oh, there's the other scale. No, it wasn't. Uh, it might have been something else. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, thankfully, uh, I had this okay, if we got to right. that point anyway. <laughs> I did draw this in the opening hand. So I, as soon as you started going off with library, I was instantly regretting not going first because I could have just waited till you funneled down to just two scales and just MST'd for the pendulum summon. Yeah. So uh, that's what I was hoping on, but holy shit. <laughs> it's bleak. Even with library, uh, we weren't able to do it. Yeah. Uh, this deck is, uh, if you go back, some of the earliest like Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro replays are this deck in particular. Concept makes sense. Royal Magical Library actually doesn't really have a whiff in the deck. It's just it doesn't get you enough. Like every three drawing a card means that you, each Gallant Cycle or each Ignite Cycle draws you one. And it has to draw into another Ignite or you have to be far enough ahead that like the rank up magic top decks are actually good. This win condition is kind of a pipe dream. The idea, <laughs> uh, as I said in deck edit, is you want to go 
from like a four or a five all the way up into Chronomaly Chaos Atlantis, uh, Dyson Sphere, and Chaos Dyson Sphere to do 8k. Yep. But frequently to do that, you need to go second because you need the sixth card very badly and you desperately mm. need to find exactly Royal Magical Library. And the problem with that is if you're going second and playing Ignite, why are you trying to burn your opponent? You can just kill yeah. them. Like there were a lot of successful Ignite builds during this time, um, which we'll explore, uh, I think a little later, and we explored a little bit already, um, especially yep. when it comes to um, ARG format. Ignite was really big. This Dyson Sphere shit, no, nah, this was not what they were doing. This was not good no, enough. Absolutely not. I, it's, I, you mentioned it when we were side decking for game three, actually, and that like this deck just seems way more proficient as just like being just like you summon a bunch of big guys and just kill your opponent going second. Right. Like, it just seems better that just to do that. And right. so uh, I guess in our own respects, we were playing our OTK decks and uh, my deck actually can OTK now because yeah. uh, we have Fright for Tiger and Fright for Tiger is kind of fucking crazy. I'm not going to lie. It makes it seem like the whole deck actually has legs. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, is... Tiger just... It's yeah, so this... I believe... Wasn't this like a jump promo or something? It was like... This got released in a weird way for us. Uh, I don't... Let me look it up real quick. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was It was released in just a strange way, like as a standalone. And that was the reason why it wasn't... Like, it didn't come in like a wave of support, like the traditional stuff. Yeah. so... Shonen what? Jump uh, 2015 is when we got yeah. it in the TCG. Okay. It, it then came out in the core special edition. Excellent. Because, you know, it was, it was probably like a $30 card being a jump promo most likely. Uh, fun and, fact, uh, after the core special edition, it wasn't reprinted until Fusion Enforcers. They were That's just like, hilarious. They were like, enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy the special edition of the jump promo. That's it. But yeah, just like having access to this means that like when you're going second now, which again, A, you're trying to OTK, which Tiger helps enable because it clears the board to make the way for something like a wolf to get in. But also you just have like even if you can't kill them, at least you can break apart their board. And there's like ways to do that. Like Fright for Fusion's crazy because it's basically Miracle Fusion. This deck's also on Dark Fusion, which is hilarious. We're playing a lot of just fusion cards because we're like most of the time we can piece together a way to get to something like Tiger because Tiger's requirements are pretty easy. The issue is really just finding sabers a lot of the time. And if you can't find sabers, I feel like you're going to have some issues with this deck. But between like Dog and, you know, Foolish and, you know, King of the Swamp acting as a replacement for it as well like it works so like you're totally fine in doing that and then you're able to cut down on some of like the bad fluffles like we saw the first time we played this deck and play some of the better ones uh in their stead uh i don't think mouse I, i'm not really sure i don't really remember seeing mouse all that much but i kind of get it because you just get three material for free and then you have edge and sabers tiger pops four cards which is kind of nuts um uh, also your wolf can just get four attacks which is crazy so yeah, like, I kind of get it. And uh, I was citing, wa I had wavering eyes in my side deck for you. So I was hoping that uh, <laughs> if I did go first and I had this set, then I'd just blow you out that way. But Literally would just win the game way. on the spot, yeah. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout out to Shadow1317, Tim00x3, MBT Play Medulce, Moto, Cameron Smith, Pony Stark, Phoenix the Immortal, The Synchro Guy, Dan the Man Hoban, Draconic, Little Fade Leaf, Jordan Coons, Cody Bretz, Dylan Hunter, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Dalton, Flannel Daddy, Thanks for the Sleeves Dad, Twinkle Muncher, Matthew Brady, I've tried reading cards before, it was horrible, and my guinea pigs had to get me therapy, Helios515, Cheeks McLapperty, Stolfin Amethyst, Wonder Waffle, MBT Cancel bio community soon. Cancel bio committee soon. Cancel bio players soon. Corvain, Uncle Brian of Stardust, and Candyman, 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 Candyman. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time.